Hi everyone. Now during this session we're going to be focusing on our key findings that we can take away from what we looked at within the SOLO model. There's a number of really interesting points when we consider the, the uh, Chinese economy here. So let's take a look. First up um, is that we've seen very, very rapid, very high strong levels of economic growth within the Chinese economy. Um, we saw that uh, China has actually enjoyed many years of double digit economic growth. Now, uh, this is entirely consistent with the catch up growth phenomenon that is identified in Robert Solo's model. So just to remind ourselves, this means initial capital investments will be rewarded by very, very high returns on those investments. So they're very, very productive. Um, that first road, that first bridge that is built really does help speed up the supply side of the economy. That first tractor really helps to boost productivity in the agricultural sector and so on. But what we must also remember is that capital accumulation is subject to diminishing marginal returns. So that is that there's only so many roads that you actually need to be built, so many bridges, so many tractors that you need working farm before they actually receive those diminishing rates of return so where each additional capital input will uh, be rewarded with smaller and smaller output gains okay um, our third point here is, is a really interesting one in relation to China's economy because China as uh, we, we've mentioned briefly has a very very high savings ratio um, during the 2000s, in fact, their marginal propensity to save was actually greater than 50%. It's very, very high. And while it has fallen somewhat, uh, it's still at a very, very high ratio. Now, this gives us uh, a couple of really interesting points here. Firstly, that the rate at which capital accumulation would take place in China is likely to be greater and that the achievement of that steady state of investment would be further to the right. Okay, So it means that China can continue to accumulate capital and continue to grow, albeit at a diminishing rate, um, but nevertheless, there is, there is some productive worth in investing in those assets. Okay, uh, So that's a really, really interesting point for China. Okay, so... What next? Well, we've also got to consider what impact does the state have within China's economy? Um, OK, so given that China has um, an interventionist state, state capitalism, socialism with uh, Chinese characteristics, whatever you may want to call it, it's, it's an interventionist state. It's yeah, the, the Communist Party and heavily decentralized structure, which uh, rewards progress and results among the regional areas. So what impact will this actually have when it comes to capital investments? Some might say in China, for instance, that their capital investments are more productive than the West because the state determines exactly where those capital investments should be made, uh, or SOEs might determine that and so on. Uh, others might actually argue, no, you know, it, it's going to breed all sorts of inefficiencies, and this may actually mean that capital investment is subject to those diminishing returns at a quicker rate than we might expect, particularly given this high marginal propensity to set. So what we've got to remember here is that uh, within the economic model, the solo model, um, that it, it considered the neutral government. China, of course, does not have a neutral government, so what will be the impact of that? Okay, um, next point. There's a need to move, of course, towards cutting-edge growth for the Chinese economy, and we, will, we are entirely aware that this will take place at a slower or diminishing rate of return. Okay? Um, so the question is, well, how do they then do this? And we saw within, their mo within our... Uh, our model there, the solo model, that to generate greater returns in the future, China will have to invest more heavily, particularly in ideas and innovation, as well as improving 
the level of education of their workforce to ensure that they have the right skills available for them. Um, now, this leads us on to our, our final point here is that uh, when it comes to generating this cutting edge growth, the question is, do China have the right skills available to actually move towards that model at the moment? There's uh, a number of uh, interesting developments that are un underway. Late last year, uh, China announced that 10-year uh, visas would be permitted with uh, allowing foreigners to actually come into China to work for a 10-year period on the premise that they are highly skilled and can really help facilitate those human capital transfers and improve the quality of Chinese uh, workers and so on. Secondly, uh, there was an article in the Financial Times just this morning uh, just stating about how uh, China is hoping to actually bring back their smartest graduates back to China to ensure that they are working within China. So they have that ample pool of talented, creative workers who can really help generate this, this cutting edge growth. Okay, so those are our key implications of the Chinese economy from uh, uh, what we looked at within the solo model. I hope that's useful. Uh, do let me know uh, how you're getting along there. Okay, thanks a lot.